Hey, are you ready? I'm ready. Are Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> hey, tonight we're gonna start off. We're gonna play a little game. This is a game for everybody. So everybody, stand up. Okay. Well, we're going to tell you how this works, but you need to stand up because you're going to be standing up anyway. So we're going to play a game called Is Kanye, is Kanye smiling? smiling Quarantine Edition. So this, this is how this is going to work. We're going to show you a picture of Kanye with a mask on. You're going to have to figure out, is he smiling or not? So if, if when we show you a picture, if you think he is smiling, you're going to head to this side. If you think he's not smiling, you'll head to this side. We'll, we'll remind you again. Once again, smiling, not smiling. Yes, and if you are wrong, you will sit down, and the last person standing wins a free D now for their friend. So you get to have a free gift. It's a $50 prize for your friend. So, and it's good for anybody who has not signed up for D now yet. By the way, who signed up for D now? Yeah, Woo! there you go. Awesome. If you have it, we'll talk to you later. All right, so here we go. Let's get that first picture. Is Kanye smiling? Yes, yes. or no? Yeah, we can do a warm up. This is a warm up, so no, no pressure. Is Kanye smiling? Yes or no? Yes or no? Get where you need to be. Three, two, one. Show it. Is Kanye smiling? No, get out of here, wait. No, no, he's not. So all of y'all would sit down. But that was just a practice. So you're all good to go. You're all still in. All right. So here we go. This is the first round. First round for real. Here we go. Let's see. Is Kanye smiling in this picture? Yes or no? Is Kanye smiling? Yes or no? All right, three, two, one. Is he smiling? Yes. yes. All right, all you guys are still in. Luke, sit down. Good try, Luke. You're in for the, for the first round. That's, that's what counts. All right, let's see our next picture of Kanye. Is he smiling? Is he smiling? Yes or no? Is Kanye smiling? Yes or no? What do you think, Soto? Do you think Kanye is smiling? I think he is. You think he is? I guess or no. Three, two, one. Is Kanye smiling? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all are all sit down. All y'all sit down. Yes, it is. That's a smile. That's a Kanye smile. That's a Kanye smile. Y'all sit down. Good try. Good job, guys. Y'all made it to the second round. All right. Y'all are all still in. Good try. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next round. Is Kanye smiling? Is oh, that Kanye one's hard. Smiling? <laughs> yes or no? Yeah or no? Nah. Yay or nay. Yay or nay. All right, three, two, one. Is Kanye smiling? No, no. he's not. Thank you all. Good try. Good job tonight. Y'all sit down. You guys are still in over face, here. Kanye. All right, next picture, please. Is Kanye smiling in this picture? Yes or no? Con, con, you no. Know. Yeah. Yes or no? Is he smiling? We've got a couple brave ones over here. No, 
Crowd, what do you think, crowd? Is he smiling? Yes or no? Oh, do you think? think? All right, is he smiling? No. All right, thank you. Good try, everybody. So we've got three people left. Wow. Okay, y'all, y'all come up here just a second. Y'all come. Y'all. Okay. Okay, all right. So what, what's your name and what's your favorite color? Uh, Jonathan in black. Okay, okay. Zachary in blue. Garrett in forest green. <laughs> so poop yeah, green. <laughs> so that, yeah, yeah, no. All right, guys. We're we're getting we're getting down we're down to just three people. So this is very competitive here. You're gonna have to make some tough choices. Nothing. Whatever he's saying right now, he's just lying because he's just trying to manipulate your feelings <laughs> to win for himself. I'm just kidding, Garrett. All right, is Kanye smiling in this picture? Oh, yes or no? Yes or no? Thank you. Oh, we got a split decision here. Are you sure, Zach? Are you sure? You're going to stay on, on the no over here. Are you guys staying on yes? Are you locked in? You're locked in. You got five seconds. Five. Four, three, two, one. Is Kanye smiling? Yes. All right, Garrett. Congratulations. Okay, awesome. So, so Garrett receives the golden ticket. For D now, he gets to have a free invite for a friend. There you go. Good job, Garrett. Awesome. Hey, Soto, why don't you tell us about what else is going on this week that people need to know about? Yes, yeah, so if you haven't signed up for our Remind 101, we have Remind 101. Amadeus, can you put it up there? Instagram or Remind 101, if you haven't signed up for either of those, make sure, turn to your friend next to you. Right, to your left and right. Ask them if they have followed us on Instagram and signed up for Mine 101. Awesome. Hey, also remember that we've got t-shirts for sale in the back. $10 each. Super cheap. Super awesome. Check it out. Hey, uh, where's Andrew at? Andrew. Here, give us, give us a little runway walk. Our campus model. Here. Yes. He's the rock of the t-shirt tonight. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> nice. Nice. If that doesn't make you want to buy a T-shirt, I don't know what How much will. are they? $10. $10. Only $10 to, to look steal. that good. So there it is right there. All right. So also, if you want to take the next step in your walk with Christ, we've got a couple of opportunities. One is tonight with Soto. FC Equip. Yeah, yes. So make sure you check that out afterwards. Stick around. And then we also have life groups on Sunday morning at 945. So if you haven't jumped into a life group on Sundays, come check it out. Come join us. And lastly, what do we got? Guys, what do we have next week? What are we doing next week? Next weekend? D what? D now? D what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. What is it? D now! So if you haven't signed up, we have sign-up sheets in the back. If you have friends to invite, grab a sheet for them and give it to them tomorrow. Yeah, and invite yes. people. This is something yes. for everybody. Invite your friends. Invite your enemies. Invite your neighbors. Invite that one kid. Invite that other kid, that other person, and uh, that other person. So just grab some forms. Invite. Grab what you need in the back. And don't let money be what keeps you from coming. If you, if, if you need a way to get there, come and talk to me, Michael, or Carrie, and we can, we can figure something out there. And the same with your friends. Like, if you ask your friends, don't let them give money as the excuse. All right? Yes, sir. What was it? 
What time is he now? Every registration begins at 6 p.m. on Friday night. So we'll register. We'll have food. We're actually having McKenzie's for our Friday night meal. So a boom. Barbecue place. So there you go. All right, Soda, would you pray for us before yes, we get sir. started with worship? Father, I thank you that we get to, to be here after um, just a crazy storm. Lord, um, I pray that tonight you would just focus our minds on, on you and, and what you've done for us, God, that as we worship, we would reflect on your great love for us. And, um, and as we open up your word, Lord, I pray that you would convict us, encourage us, challenge us in any way. Um, and I just thank you for tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Who's ready to worship? Okay, so this first one was new. It's super fun. Um, we're really excited to share it with you. And Nathan's going to show you some of the, the chorus. All right, so you guys, it's really easy to follow along with. We're singing about God being good, which is true. It's simple, but... It's something that we should always celebrate, be excited about. So we're going to sing that together. We're going to say, And I'll sing because you are good, and I'll dance because you are good, and I'll shout because you are good, you are good. Yeah? Okay, let's try that again. And I'll sing because you are good, and I'll dance because you are good, and I'll shout. You are good, you are good to me, to me. Oh yeah, that's great. Woo! So you guys can do that.
the opportunity to be here tonight. I want to thank you for helping us all through this crazy freeze. And that despite whatever happened last week, that we're all here tonight. I pray that you open our hearts, open our ears, and our minds to what Michael and Christian have to say tonight. And that we'll leave moved. Everything we do is in your name. Come on, everybody. Everybody stand up for a second. <laughs> All right. Let's twist it out a little bit. Maybe do like some, some like leg. Stretch out the legs a little bit. Yeah, Carly's got a good idea. Let's maybe do some like little, maybe not jumping jacks, but kind of like that. Do the arms around. You've got stinky pits, probably not too much. Let me calm down. Okay, let's calm down on the arms, stinky pits. Awesome. All right. Is everybody good? Everybody awake? Awesome. Go ahead. You can sit down again. Anybody need a Bible? Hey, Sarah, there's two more right here. Okay, thank you. So is passing out some Bibles if you need one. So is Miss Carrie. If you need one. And we're going to be in Genesis chapter 6 tonight. Yeah, uh -huh. Genesis chapter 6. So are y'all excited about me now? I don't know if y'all really are excited about me now. Yeah! Because... Yeah! Let me tell you, we met with our leaders last night, our, our host home people and the leaders that are going to be staying with you guys, uh, and we even had the worship leader on with us last night, and everybody is pumped for not this weekend, but next weekend. It's crazy that it's so fast, right here, right? It's like March is next week. Yes. Well, there is that too. So... Uh, one of the things, like, like we were talking about earlier, I just want to reiterate to you, please sign up for D-Now. It's, it's the biggest thing that we, it's, to me, it's bigger than camp and mission trip. You want to know why? Because it's everything, every part of ministry, it's every part of the church wrapped into one weekend. We get to worship together. We get to enter into a time of discipleship together where we're learning from God's word together. We get to fellowship with one another where we get to hang out and get to know each other in the host homes. Uh, we get to do what? Sleep together. <laughs> Sleep in, in the same room together. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe too much facts. Too much. Stay up for a little bit. Maybe not. No, I'm not. It's not at all. I'm jealous about that. Uh, we get to hear the gospel, so it's a great opportunity to invite somebody who has not heard the gospel. And we get to serve together because we're going to be doing service projects this year. Uh, so everything that you would think that a church should be doing, you get to do in a weekend. So it's, it's the one big weekend. And uh, like we said, don't let money be an issue. Invite your friends if they're like, oh, I want to go, but I can't afford it. Tell them, come talk to us. We'll, take, we'll figure out a way to get them there, okay? We don't want that to be... An issue for anybody. Uh, so, if you've got, we're inviting sixth graders. So, if you even know sixth graders that uh, would like to come, then then invite them as well. Okay. Uh, but with that, D now the theme for D now this year is the journey. It goes along with burn the ships. Burn the ships. Because the first step in, in before we can burn the ships, we have to take that first step of faith and get on the boat and go somewhere. Right. Uh, we were talking about. Cortez and, and how that was his first thing once they got to the new world that they burned the ships. Well, before they had they got there, they had to make the journey across the ocean. They had to take that first initial step of faith, of understanding what their mission was. And that's going to be what we're talking about for d -Now Weekend, is taking that step. Even though it may be crazy, even though it may not make a whole lot of sense, even though we, know, we don't know the whole big picture of what's going on, we take that first step in the journey. So we're going to be looking at Abraham, also known as Abram, before he gets his name changed, because he's cool like that. 
Uh, but we're going to be looking at his life and his story about how he walked in faith, despite all the other circumstances around him. So before we get to Dean now, I thought it would be fun to back up and talk about Abraham's great, 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 great grandma. That's eight grades. Noah. Did you know that? No. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, so Noah, Noah is Abraham's great, 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 great grandpa. That's a lot of great. Yes, that is correct. So, <laughs> yes, Bible facts. So, uh, we're going to do, this week and next week, we're going to be looking at the life of Noah, and we're going to be trying to ask ourselves, what can we learn from his life and how he responded to God. So tonight we're going to be looking at the faith of Noah, how he showed that faith, how he took that first step in the journey. Even though God was going to ask him to do things that didn't make sense, even though God was going to do things that had never been done before, Noah trusted and had faith. And we're, we're going to be looking at three instances of that tonight. So the, so the, the whole joke is like, hey, you need a boat? I know a guy. Uh, 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 Dad joke. You're welcome. Don't don't act like you're not going to use that joke tomorrow, especially at Covenant. Y'all know you're going to use that joke tomorrow. Get extra points on the test or something. <laughs> so, all right, let's jump in. So the first thing, the first place that we see Noah showing faith is that Noah showed his faith by being blameless and walking with God. So let's let's look at Genesis chapter six. I just want to read verses 5 through 9. Because it gives us a little bit of backstory into how do we get to know? How do we get there? Okay, so verse 5 of chapter 6. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in his eyes, in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Noah was seen as blameless. He walked with God. But let's... That was a little bit weird, wasn't it? Or we can't lie, right? That, that just There's something about that passage we just read that doesn't sit right. What, what doesn't sit right to you? That, he, that Noah was the only one that was seen as blameless? Okay. Does anybody else find that interesting? Yeah? So, we get to this point in the story, we're only, we've only gone through five ch chapters of the Bible. In chapter one, we get the story of how God created everything. In chapter two, it, it, it singles in and it tells us the story of Adam and Eve and how God created man set apart from all the other creation because we weren't just some accident, but God created us with purpose, and we know this because He created us in His own image. There's something beyond just being alive that's to us. We are actually created with a purpose. And then in chapter 3, we have something happen. I remember what? Sin enters the world. As Adam and Eve partake of the fruit after being deceived by Satan in the garden, Satan gets them to believe the lie that surely they won't die, even though God has just told them that they will. Then in chapter 4, that sin escalates. No longer is it, oh, we're naked and we're, we feel shame. No longer is it we haven't just listened to God, but now what happens? Cain and Abel, where we have murder take place in chapter 4. Great story so far, right? 
In chapter 5, we just get this little bit of, of genealogy where we go from Adam to Noah. And then we get to chapter 6 where we see that something has taken place in this time. Which if we, if we look at the timeline, it's probably a little bit over 1,500 years has passed since the moment of the fall to where we are now with Noah. And the Lord looks at his creation and all that he sees is the wickedness of man. Over those 1,500 years, people lived a really long time like hundreds and hundreds of years long lives. Now, now how many of you play a sport or, or an instrument of some kind? Or do something? Y'all do something, right? How many of y'all do something? Okay. Imagine if you had 900 years to, perf to perfect whatever you do. Yeah, right? You'd be like 850, just be like, with the Nolan, like a Jordan Pedro. I broke the record, and I'm talking about the free throw record, that old farmery. Yeah. So, if you had that much time to live, you would perfect whatever you were practicing, right? So as sin entered the world, and as people got further and further away from God, as people quit listening to God, and, and quit, quit worrying about who they created them, and just started worrying about themselves and what they could get out of their lives. That selfishness, those selfish desires, that sin just grew in their lives. And over 900 years, you can imagine that if that's what they're practicing, that's what they're getting good at. So 900 years of lying. 900 years of stealing. 900 years of murder. 900 years of, of using people. 900 years of, of doing whatever they can to do what's best for themselves and not worry about another single person. So you can imagine the amount of wickedness that would grow from that. And how distant somebody's heart could get from God. And that's what God the Lord saw when he looked down. And because of that he regretted making us. Not because he felt like he had made a mistake, but because he looked at us and he saw the wickedness, and he saw what we were doing to each other. As his creation, what, what he intended for good as he created everything in the, the garden, he said, it is good. It had been destroyed. And in his mercy, in his mercy, Instead of letting that continue on, where more and more people could just come into the world and destroy other people, in his mercy, he said, let's start over. And in doing so, he actually shows us something, is, is that sometimes we look at the world and we go, this is a screwed up place, I wish God would just start over. Well, he did, and we'll find out right after Noah that it only took one generation before things started getting screwed up again. So he does this to show us that that's not an option. But it's only us being changed by Him through Christ that can make a difference. So, He sees the wickedness, He, he feels the sorrow and this regret. But we have Noah. We have Noah. We have Noah. So, here's Noah. There's something different about Noah. Obviously, we see that right off the, the from the start because Noah found favor in, in the eyes of the Lord. Favor. That means God looked at him and, and, and saw him differently. There was something about Noah that, that made him stand out. It says that he was righteous. Does this mean he was perfect? No. No one's perfect. But what it does mean is that he was, he was living a mature life. He was trying to do the right things. He was making sure that he wasn't living for himself, but was being aware of God and, and that he was created by something. And, and therefore, God reached down and was a part of his life. And even in the midst of the wicked generation, what did, what did Noah do with God? He walked with him. He walked with him. So that means that on a daily basis, he let his steps be guided by God, not by the ways of the world, which was different. So here's, here's our thought after we get through this of, of looking at this first thing of, 
of Noah showing his faith by being blameless and walking with God, we have to ask ourselves this question. We live in a world of sin all around us. We see the messed up parts of the world around us. There's some days we probably wake up and we go to school and go, man, this place is pretty wicked. And it's not like, pretty wicked, like we're from the 80s or something. And we're surfers, I don't know. But we don't, we don't see it like that, but we see the wickedness. We see the brokenness. We see the sin all around us, right? You probably saw something happen today where you looked at that and just went, that is not okay. That's not right. That's not how things should be. Maybe something happened to you today. Maybe somebody wronged you. We're all, right now in this moment, all you're thinking about is, oh yeah, that moment. I know exactly what you're talking about. Maybe you're sitting here going, I was that person to somebody else today. I did something that I regret because it was wrong, because I wronged somebody else. We live in a world of great sin, probably not as wicked because we don't have 900 years to perfect sin in our lives, but we do see the wickedness in our world. Would we be seen as different than the rest of the world? If God looked down and saw all the brokenness in the world, would he look at us and see someone who would find favor in his eyes? Would he look down and see us and, and say, there's somebody who is walking with me. I think if we want to take that first step of faith, it's all about taking that first step of faith to walk with him, trust him. Even in the craziness of our world, be set apart, be different. Be different than the rest of the world. So maybe that's a challenge for you tonight. The second way that Noah showed his faith Writing down these. Second way he showed his faith was by saying yes to God. So let's let's jump down to verse 13. Verses 10 through 12 just kind of reiterate the corruptness of the world and everything that's going on. And then in verse 13 we have something here. And God said to Noah, Well, that's different. God spoke to Noah. That's pretty awesome. I don't think that would happen if he wasn't walking with him or wasn't trying to do the right thing, trying to be in the right place where he needs to be to hear from God. But verse 13, And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits, and its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks, for behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animals according to their kinds, and every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind. Two of every sort shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also take with you every sort of food that is eaten and stored up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. And then verse 22, I want you to hang on to this one. Can someone read verse 22 for me? Yeah, read it on. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Can you do it one more time to like yell it out loud? <laughs> Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. So Noah showed his faith by saying yes to God. We can get into, I, I can show you diagrams of a boat. That's even more boring than me just reading them off, right? So we're not going to do that. I'm not going to pretend I'm like an architect and show you all, you know. There's the one in, was it Kentucky? They've made, they've made a boat that they believe is, is close to what it might have looked like. 
Uh, of course, Heaven Almighty. That, that would be. Oh, and, and Noah made one, of course. Yeah, that guy. So, but the last thing is the most important here because it shows us that the Lord gave Noah instructions, specific instructions. He told them everything that he was going to do, and Noah said, Yes. I will do that. He didn't go, wait, how long? Why would I need a boat that big? What's going to happen again? God, why are you doing this? He just said, yes. He just said yes. The other thing here is that everybody gets upset about the animals. They're like, well, how could that many animals fit on the boat? I think the key word here is two of every sort. So it's not like you had every single creature, specific creature on the earth. It was every single sort. So if, like cats. You didn't have like 25 different types of cats. Maybe you had one single pair of cats. And then you get the picture, right? Most of you have had genetics. It happens. Okay, so that's 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 how things kind of separated from there. So I don't want you to get hung up on those types of questions. But there's so many questions, right? There's so many questions that Noah could have asked. There's so many things that he could have gone back to where he would have said, wait to God, I have questions. Or I don't know about that. Let me ask other people. Or maybe you just flat out, no, not me. But his answer was yes. And he did everything that the Lord commanded him to do. So we, once again, we get struck with this thing, this, this question in our lives. Are we saying yes to God? Are we saying yes to God? When God gives us a plan and puts something on our hearts and tells us to go and do something, are we saying, yes, God, I will do that? Or do we stop and do we question every single little thing? Do we stop and go, no? Do we stop and try to seek counsel from somebody else that's, that has no idea what's going on or what God's calling us to do. Just because we want somebody to tell us that we're crazy because God has called us to do something and we just want an excuse to say no. This happens when God puts it on your heart to share the gospel with somebody. You know it. You know you're supposed to talk to that person. You know you're supposed to go up to them. You know, you know you're supposed to have that tough conversation, but instead you go, well, what if they don't like it? What if I don't say the right things? What if it ruins our friendship? What if something happens where they, they get other people not to like me? Then all of a sudden we've walked ourselves away from no, we've walked her, or we walked ourselves away from saying yes to God, and we've said no to God. It happens when God calls, when, when we're in the middle of something and we know we shouldn't do it because we know it's a sin, and the Spirit of God is speaking to us and talking to us and saying, "Don't do this. You know you don't want to. Do, you know this is a sin. You know this is the wrong path. You know this is the wrong direction. You shouldn't do this." You go, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. And then we fall. All because we didn't say yes to God. So maybe there's something we can learn here about saying yes to God. And lastly, Noah showed his faith by waiting out the storm. So as you can imagine, Everything happened according to how God said it would. Right? Of course it did. It always does. Everything happened. They got the animals onto the ark. 
They loaded up the family. And they went on a vacation. Not quite. God shut the door of the ark. And they were, they were in the ark together. Christ stuck. There's lots of animals. Lots of poop. They're all, they're all on the ark. The rains came. It says even that the waters gushed up from the ground. Whatever that means. The flood took place. It would have been slow. Think of a, a rain when you're, you're listening to rain on inside your house and you kind of hear it hitting the roof or maybe metal, if you have metal around, it's kind of got that, that rain sound. And then after a while, it didn't stop, but the boat began to lift up off the ground. This huge boat full of all the animals and all these people and all this food and all, this, all these supplies. It just continued to rise. As the waters did. As the waters rose, as it says, above the tops of the mountains. All this time. 150 days. 150 days. That they were shut in this boat. Not only that, it seemed like things stopped, but they were still on top of the water. You know, we, we talk about the flood happening, but we don't think, like, oh, all that water had to go down. Ultimately, by the end of it, a lot of people have taken guesses at how long Noah was on the boat. But he was probably on the boat about an entire year. By half the year, it was raining, and the flood was happening, and about half the year, the waters were going down. And it's not until the boat hits something, a mountain, that he opens the window and just looks out. And he sends a bird out. And he starts to send this bird out just to check to see what's going on. But all this to say, Noah's showing his faith by waiting out the storm. This last week, how many of you guys lost power? At least for a little while. I know some of you guys lost power for like over a day, right? Almost. Yeah, almost. How many of you guys lost your water? How many of you still don't have your water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. That's a whole other story. Don't worry, I showered this morning, okay? <laughs> Just not in my home. So. We went through a week of a crazy storm where it wiped out things and we were shut inside our houses and we were told not to go anywhere. Imagine a year on a boat with animals and the craziness that happens with, with animals, with your family. And you're, you're stuck in this boat. And never once in Scripture do we see a moment where Noah loses faith. He's human. I'm sure some days he woke up and he was like, I could get off this boat about right now. I could be done with this flood, thank God. But never once in Scripture does it say anything about Noah's attitude changing. Never once does it say that he lost faith in what was going to happen. Never once did, did he question God and what he was doing. Never once. In the midst of the storm, he waited. By the way, does God speak to Noah while he's on the boat? Yeah. No. It's the same. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Let's, let's jump down to Genesis chapter 8. I want to show you what happens. This is chapter 8, uh, verse 15. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, 
except for the unicorns, they left those behind. <laughs> that they may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. It's been a year, they've been on the boat, they've experienced this catastrophic flood. They've waited patiently as the waters have slowly gone down. And God finally speaks and says, do this. And Noah is just as ready as he was the day when he first got called by God to build the boat, to exit the boat exactly how God told him to. He had faith to wait in the storm. And not wait like this. But to wait and be ready for when God would speak again and call him to do the next thing. So that he could take that next step in the journey. How are we holding up in the storms? I guarantee that some of us are going through some storms right now. Whether that's family struggles, just life, trying to make decisions. Maybe it's just something going on. Just another day. Are we waiting with faith in the Lord? Or not? Or are we trying to do something else? See, what happens when we don't wait is that we try to fix things and it never works. See, like right now, like this, with, with not having water for over a week now, I'm starting to have, like today I was thinking, I was having crazy thoughts. I was like, I'm just going to call the people and just be like, hey guys, just wonder when you're coming because, you know, I could have gone through plumbing school and forged my own parts from out of metal and cast them in an oven that I don't even have that would do that. I would have to make that from scratch too. I could have done all that by now and fixed my own pipes. So when are you coming? So I just have these crazy thoughts of all the things that I can do to try to fix my own, our problem. But isn't that what we do? Instead of waiting on the Lord, what we do instead, instead of waiting in faith, what we do is we try to fix our problem. And in doing so, we take shortcuts. We take shortcuts. Instead of working on that relationship we need to work on, you know, sitting down with that person that we have a problem with, and working it out and doing the tough work of doing that, we sweep it under the rug. Because at least we don't have the mess anymore. But it's still there. Instead of dealing with the tough questions that we need to get answered, we just put them in the back of our mind. But then all of a sudden that deadline keeps getting closer and closer to when you need to have an answer for that question. So Noah, so Noah showed us faith by being set apart, by looking different than the rest of the world around him. He showed us faith by saying yes to God. And he showed us faith because he waited. He waited in the midst of the storm. So hopefully uh, that just gives us all a, a bigger picture of faith and maybe that challenges you somewhere. I know that's, that's challenged me this for this week of, of being, especially that last one, just waiting. Just trying to be patient. Trying, trying to wait. Trying to do all the right things and, and do what I can, but also just waiting. So we know that Noah wasn't perfect. But he did show us great faith. And one of those first yeses that we can take in faith is saying yes to Christ, who died for our sins. Like I said, God did this to show us that wiping out, wiping out, he would, he would later come back and promise to Noah, I will never do this again. I will never do this again. Because he had a greater plan in store. That one day he would send his own son 
to die for us. That we could be forgiven of all the wickedness and brokenness in our lives. That we could be, instead of chasing after all those things, that we would get a new heart, and that we would be renewed, that we can then chase after him and walk with him, just as Noah did, just as Abraham did. So I don't know where you're at with your walk with Christ, or if you don't even have taken that first step of faith, but I would love to talk with you about uh, salvation, how you can receive Him as your Lord and Savior, or if you just need to know about how you can take that next step. Or even if you're just struggling with something and you want somebody to pray with you about something that you're walking through, some sort of storm, or maybe you're just saying no, but you need to be saying yes, and you just need someone to help encourage you, I would just invite you to come talk to me after in between now and FC Equip before you take off tonight. Uh, but I love you guys. Let's, let's go ahead and pray. And we'll head out. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for these students and their willingness to come and hear from your word. God, help us all to just take a step of faith and say yes to you. Father, for those that have never received you as their, their Lord and Savior. God, I pray that tonight they would make that decision. They would have the boldness to come talk about what that means and, and how they can, they can do that. And I know that you're working in their lives right now. But I pray for those that are maybe struggling with situations going on in their life right now and they don't know how to handle them. Uh, maybe it's just they're, they're overwhelmed by life's storm. So God, I just ask for you to bring peace to their lives, but also that you would give them faith to be able to wait in the midst of the storm. That God, a day is coming when rest will happen, when the boat rests on dry ground. But we need to be ready to hear from you again and take the next step that you have for us. And Father, help us to live lives as, as followers of you that are set apart from this world. That even though the rest of the world may, may not know what's going on, there may be wickedness all around us, that we wouldn't fall into the trap of, of looking exactly like the world, but we would look different. Not because we're, we have power within us, that's, that's of ourselves, but because we're alive in you, and that you give us the ability to live lives set apart for you, to bring you glory, not for us, but for you. So help us to do that this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.